Cardi Cardi Crochet Along. I'm Jess from Make Do Crew and I've partnered with my friends at Lion Brand to create this four part free pattern and video tutorial series. In the first three weeks we completed the main sweater and today we'll be adding some finishing touches like pockets and ribbing. You can find the link to part four of the free written pattern as well as the link to the ad free printable PDF below. All right, let's finish off these party cardies. Quick note, if you notice in this video that your sweater looks a little different than what is shown here, it's because the way that the crochet along stages were separated out is slightly different than the way the PDF flows. And that was simply for the ease of the crochet along working well in four sections. So you have not done anything wrong if your cardigan is in a little different state. The video tutorials cover each step of the pattern and we could do many of the steps in different orders to arrive at the same patchwork destination at the end. Okay, we're going to begin our ribbing by working around the entire bottom of the sweater and this ribbing is actually worked perpendicular to the main sweater rows. So we're going to begin with a chain and then work back and forth like this, joining to the sweater as we go. And right now, here's the bottom of my sweater. So I'm going to rotate this around so that it's more as if I were wearing it. This would be the bottom left side of the sweater on my left hand side right side of the sweater over here, and I have the right side facing out. So the seams that we worked are inside the sweater right now. And we are going to attach our yarn for right-handed here on the left uh, corner edge. If you're left-handed, you're going to attach your yarn right over here at the right bottom front corner. Now I have my worsted weight yarn for the ribbing and the smaller hook. That's what we're going to be using for all of our ribbing. And I like to attach any new pieces of yarn with a slip knot on my hook like this. And then I just insert my hook wherever I need to attach the yarn and yarn over. It's a tight little stitch there and then pull through that loop that's on my hook. And once I fasten it down, it's attached to that new spot on my project. And here we're going to start with 10 chains. And then our ribbing is going to be worked entirely in single crochet. So I'm going to single crochet into my second chain for my hook and each chain all the way back to the beginning of the sweater edge right here. So now I have nine single crochet here and I'm going to begin to attach my ribbing right along the bottom edge of the sweater. So I've already attached my yarn in this first stitch here. So I'm going to slip stitch into the next stitch along the bottom here. And because we're working into a foundation chain, I like to make sure that I'm working under two loops of the chain because we don't want this to stretch out and create a gap between the ribbing and the bottom of the sweater. So I just like to make sure that I'm going into a spot that allows for two loops to be uh, kind of holding onto the ribbing and supporting that weight. So I've got one slip stitch here and then I'm going to slip stitch into the next stitch along the bottom of the sweater. So we've got two now, and now we're going to turn around and work back in the opposite direction along this ribbing. So this is technically a wrong side row because we're going to be looking at the wrong side of our sweater. And I like to then move my yarn behind my chain right here. And then we'll skip our slip stitches. So sometimes it's hard to tell which are slip stitches and which are single crochets when you're first getting started. So if you're confused at all, just count the number of stitches here. And you'll know if you're supposed to have eight single crochets that's once you get to eight, <laughs> then don't work in any of the other stitches because they are slip stitches. And we're just going to work in the back loop of our single crochets. And that's gonna create a nice ribbed texture. So I will work in the back loop of each of these stitches. And as I arrive here at the very last single crochet of this ribbing edge, I'm going to work under both loops for my final single crochet. So it's just like a regular single crochet there. And that's gonna help keep the edge, the bottom edge of our ribbing just a little tidier. So now I will chain one and turn back and work in the opposite direction. So again, now we're working with the right side facing. And we are just going to repeat what we did in the last row. So 
That is a single crochet through the back loop of each of these stitches until we get back to the bottom edge of the sweater. This yarn feels a little delicate, doesn't it, after using the chunkier yarn for the rest of the sweater. And similar to before, I'm going to slip stitch into the next unworked stitch along the bottom edge. And again, I'm working under two bars of that foundation chain. So I've got a slip stitch there to connect it, and then I'm going to slip stitch into the next stitch. So I've done two slip stitches now, and I'm ready to turn my work. And from here, we're just going to repeat that process all the way around the bottom. So I've got my wrong side row. I'm going to single crochet through the back loop of each of these stitches until I get to my final single crochet in which I will single crochet through both loops. And then I'll turn around, work back the other way, slip stitch two along the bottom, work back and get the idea. It's going to create this nice ribbed texture along the bottom to frame out our beautiful patchwork. All right, once we've added ribbing along the entire bottom of the sweater, you should be ending up at the opposite front corner. So if you're right-handed, that's the right front corner of the sweater. Left-handed, it's gonna be the left front corner. And you wanna make sure that you're ending with a wrong side row. So that means a row that's working down toward the bottom of the sweater. And that might mean that instead of slip stitching two at the very end of the row, or sorry, the very end of the sweater, you slip stitch just one. Um, it's more important to get the yarn in the right position than it is to have that exact repeat in your last repeat. Um, and on that note, you want to make sure that you work into this turning chain from your last color block so that you do slip stitch there before you head back the other direction because otherwise that'll be kind of hanging out um, and not be such a smooth edge with the ribbing. So once that is complete, we're going to keep our yarn attached and work up the sweater this way along the collar. And this is going to be worked the same way as the bottom ribbing by chaining a foundation here and then working in that single crochet back loop only back and forth in our rows as we go up the sweater toward the neck. So just like when we began the ribbing on the bottom here, we're going to start with chains and we're still calling the right side of the sweater the right side. So just like before, our first ribbing row is going to be a right side row, and that's just going to consist of single crocheting in the second chain from the hook, and then each chain until we get back to the sweater edge. And then we need to slip stitch to join this ribbing to our sweater edge here. So we're going to skip our first stitch because that's kind of the stitch that our yarn was attached to. And we're going to slip stitch into the next two available stitches on the sweater edge. And we're going to do that in this case, just through the back loop. So that's one slip stitch, a second slip stitch, and then we're going to turn and work back in the opposite direction. So this is just like we did with the bottom ribbing. We'll skip our first two slip stitches here because we're only going to work into the single crochets. I'm not chaining at all. I'm just going to single crochet through the back loop of each stitch until I get to that last single crochet stitch and I'll go ahead and work under both of the loops for that stitch because that's what creates the nice clean edge of the ribbing. Once that row is complete, I'm going to chain one. We always chain one at the bottom of the ribbing and work back in the opposite direction. And now you kind of get the idea here. We're just going to repeat the same process, back loop only, slip stitch two, back in the other direction. You've already done quite a bit of this at this point. And we're going to repeat like that until we get to the main edge of the sweater here. And we'll talk about how to work into these raw row edges as we work up the sweater toward the neck. And just a quick reminder that because it's kind of easy to miss a stitch working ribbing this way or possibly accidentally work into a slip stitch, it's a good idea to just periodically count your stitches and make sure that you have the correct number of single crochets and then your ribbing will stay nice and even. And now that I've worked ribbing up to the first color block here, we're going to continue in the same pattern of slip stitching two. Now we're just going to make sure that we, every time we slip stitch two, it spans 
the raw edge of one row. So if you see here, we've got run row, one, 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 like that. So I'm going to slip stitch kind of into the bottom of this first row. And just like before, we don't really want to work under just one um, strand of yarn, except for what we did right here in the back loop. But in general, we don't want to do that. We want to give a little bit of stability here by slip stitching under two strands. Just make sure we get enough meatiness of that sweater there. So I've got one slip stitch and then I'm going to slip stitch to kind of the top part of this turning chain stitch here so that I've gotten two slip stitches in and now I'm going to turn and work back the other direction. This is the same as we always do with the wrong side row. I'll single crochet in the back loop of each stitch and then turn around and work back in the opposite direction. And again, I've made it back to my raw row edge here, and it almost looks as if I haven't worked into this row here, but if I look closer, it's just because things got scrunched up when I worked back. So I definitely want to work into my second colored row here. And again, I'm going to sort of insert my hook in the center of this half double crochet uh, so that I can get enough of the yarn so that my stitch doesn't split in a funny way. So I've got one slip stitch there and then I'm going to slip stitch again a little higher up. Now I slip stitched twice and I can work back in the opposite direction and we're just going to continue in that pattern. Slip stitching two, working back a wrong side row, turning a right side row, slip stitching two, all of that uh, for several more inches. Now once you've made it to the top of the front with your ribbing, you can continue doing the exact same thing but working into the stitches that are at the top of the strip and you'll just slip stitch two times, one to connect your ribbing and then one to move the yarn forward and you'll just do two slip stitches and you'll be working into the top of these stitches here and then you can continue using the same technique we used here where we slip stitched twice along each raw row edge and work back down this direction. So that is really probably pretty self-explanatory but I just wanted to let you know so that there's no ambiguity. To create the cuff of our sleeve we're going to use that same ribbing technique that we've been using before and we want to make sure our yarn is attached with the right side of the sleeve facing up. So look at this triangle seam here and make sure you're looking at the right side of it. So once you're sure you're on the right side you'll attach your yarn. If you're right-handed you'll attach it on the right um, corner. If you're left-handed you'll attach it on the left corner and then we're going to use that same ribbing technique where we'll single crochet uh, into the second chain and each chain and then we'll skip this um, stitch that our yarn was attached in and instead slip stitch into the next sleeve stitch slip stitch one more so each time we're slip stitching twice and then head back the opposite direction working single crochets through the back loop only and then you're going to go back and forth back and forth working all the way along the sleeve just like this so this is just like we did with the bottom ribbing and when your cuff is complete it should look something like this so again we've got that ribbing and we want to make sure we're ending with a wrong side row so you want to end with your yarn right up here because that will allow us to fold the cuff over and disguise the seam as much as possible. So if you're finding that it is fitting pretty loosely before you work back in this direction, then just work one entire repeat less. So just stop up here um, without working into your last stitch. If you feel like you want a little bit more give in your cuff, then work all the way to the end and then back once more up to the sleeve edge. And then again, when you fasten off, you can leave a long tail just in case you want to use it for your seaming. And one note when you are seaming the cuff, I have found that it looks the most seamless once it's turned right side out to tuck the, the very first foundation row, so that's the chain row here, so that it is on top. So when I sewed the other side, I found it easier to just turn it right side out for this little section because then you can make sure your stitches are really aligned, but you'll want this chain row to be on top here so that you can kind of 
uh, merge them together and create the most seamless looking seam there for that little cuff join. And when that is complete on one side, you'll go ahead and move over and do the exact same thing for the other sleeve. All right, I really think you're going to find making your pockets a piece of cake because they are exactly the same as beginning any strip that you've already created. So you're still going to chain the same number of stitches and work the same number of rows as you did for each of these squares, the beginning squares of each strip. And then you're just going to fasten off, leaving a long strand for joining it to your sweater. And when you're choosing the colors to work your pockets in, you're gonna to wanna to think about what colors are around this bottom front corner on either side because you'll want your pocket to coordinate with that because it's going to sit on top of what's already there. Very likely you may choose to just make your pocket in the same color as is already there because you've already decided it looks good there. That's what I did here and that's what I have for this pocket over here. And once your pockets are complete, you're just going to pin them in place, making sure that you have the right side of the pocket facing up so that it matches the direction of the stitches on the rest of your sweater, which also has the right side of the strips facing up. So one more time, how we know that this is the right side of the swatch or the pocket. Um, I'm looking at this bottom tail and it's on the side of my non-dominant hand. So I crochet with this hand, it is on the other hand. So I know that this is my right side row facing up and I'm ready to just start over here using my tail and I'll whip stitch the pocket into place right on top of the square that's already there. Again, I think it's helpful to pin this in place just to make sure all the lines of um, stitches stay lined up and everything looks clean and kind of invisible, but you're going to do that on either side to create some nice little pockets for yourself. And if you chose to add buttonholes on your collar ribbing, now you're going to want to sew your buttons on. And the way you do that is with a scrap of yarn that's the same similar-ish color to your buttons. And you're going to want to make sure that those buttons are placed directly across from the buttonholes on the collar ribbing. So one trick I use is to count the number of ribbing ridges between each buttonhole. And then make sure I place the buttons with the same number of rows of ribbing in between. And that should make them line up perfectly when you place place the buttons in the buttonholes. And lastly, it can be a good idea to do a little bit of blocking on your sweater. And the way we do that is to just lay it out flat and then using a steamer or an iron with a steam setting, hold it about five inches away from your sweater and aim the steam directly at the sweater, making sure you don't actually touch the yarn directly with your iron or steamer. And you're gonna focus mostly on any seams that you have that need just a little bit of convincing to lay flat. And there you have it. I'm incredibly proud of you for going on this crochet adventure with us. I hope you love this cardigan that you've created with your own two hands. And you've worked so hard, you have to show off your sweater. Use the hashtag patchworkpartycardi on Instagram or share your photos on Ravelry so everyone can admire what you've made. Now, I hope this isn't the end of our crochet journey together. I'd love for you to sign up for my weekly email where I send out free crochet patterns and tutorials just like this. Thank you so much for joining me and my friends at Lion Brand in the Patchwork Party Cardi Crochet Along. Happy crocheting!